Hi, this is Andrew with Infinity Cutting Tools. Today we're over here at the bandsaw to do a little bit of setup for a new bandsaw blade. There are three steps we need to do every time we change the blade to make sure we get the ultimate performance that we can out of that blade. Whether we're using an Infinity Rip resaw blade or an Olsen quarter inch curve cutting blade, these steps are going to be the same. We're going to be doing these steps on our Rikon Professional Bandsaw here in our shop, but the steps are going to be pretty similar no matter what type of saw you have. Before we get started, we want to make sure that the saw is unplugged and safe so there's no way it can turn on while we're doing these steps. Let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I want to do whenever I install a new blade is go ahead and make sure I have the blade properly tensioned. I'm going to move my guides up and out of the way so they're not interfering with the blade, and I'm going to go ahead and tension the blade until I can push on the side of the blade and get about a quarter inch of give with light to moderate pressure. Once I have this amount of give, I know the blade's going to be just about right and run fairly true. I can go ahead and double check this setting by going ahead and turning on the saw and watching it run. I want to see that the blade doesn't flutter in any way. If the blade is fluttering, I'm going to go ahead and make minor adjustments to that tension until the blade runs nice and smoothly. Once I have my blade tension, I need to go ahead and set up my blade guides. The way I'm going to do this is I want to set the side guides as close to the blade as I can without them coming in contact with the blade while the blade is running. One trick for getting these guides set just right is to use a piece of notebook paper as a feeler gauge so you can slide it up in between the blade and each guide. This is going to give you the perfect setting for those guides. The back guide needs to be set very close to the blade as well. For this, I like to use a business card as a feeler gauge. That's going to give you that perfect distance from the back edge of the blade to that back guide. I would do this for both the upper and lower guides on the saw. Once I have the blade tensioned and the guide set, the last thing I need to do is set my fence for the drift of the blade. This is a very easy procedure to do. You want to take a piece of scrap material and make sure that the edge is jointed nice and straight. Then I take a marking gauge and simply mark a parallel line on the face of this piece of scrap. With the fence out of the way, I would go ahead and feed the block into the blade, trying to follow my scribed line as closely as possible. Once I can feed that block into the blade without making any adjustments, and it follows my line perfectly, for about three to four inches, I'm going to go ahead and stop, turn the saw off, let the blade come to a stop, and I'm going to take a pencil and mark a line on my table right down the edge of that piece of material. Now I can take that block and set it aside and I can bring my fence over and line it up with that pencil line. I want to make sure that my fence lines up perfectly with the line drawn on the table. This is going to mean that the fence and the blade are in perfect alignment. Each blade is going to have a slightly different drift angle to it, so we want to make sure that the fence is set to the same drift angle as that specific blade. Now that we have our saw set up and ready to go, let's go ahead and make a cut. We know our fence is set appropriately. I've gone ahead and set the space to about an eighth of an inch, so I'm going to make about an eighth of an inch veneer cut out of this piece of seven inch wide cherry. I've also gone ahead and set the height of my guides so they're just slightly above the top of my piece when I make the cut. Let's go ahead and fire the saw up and we'll see how this blade cuts. Here's the cut. Nice, beautiful, thin, very consistent cut, and a very smooth, consistent finish to that cut. Three steps to setting up your bandsaw for ultimate performance. You're going to get smoother, cleaner, more accurate cuts every time you fire up the saw. This means you're going to waste less material and get the best cut possible every time you make a cut.